Dear Livestock Entrepreneurs, welcome to the Livestock Entrepreneurship uh, YouTube channel. Uh, this channel was established purposely for you. Um, we always want to share experiences, um, ideas, innovations, um, livestock management uh, practices with you. Today, uh, I want us to look at a very important uh, topic in management of livestock. And that topic is about pasture management and how management of pastures affect the production and productivity of our dairy cattle. Um, as farmers, we have to understand that our um, management systems in Uganda majorly depend on pastures. If they majorly depend on pastures, that means that most of the feed requirements or nutritional requirements of our animals must be met through uh, grazing or feeding our animals on pastures. These pastures can be processed in different ways, including hay. But today we are looking at meeting the day-to-day -day nutrient requirements of our animals through grazing. Now, there are a number of factors that we need to look at when we are managing pastures and how the pastures affect meeting the nutrient requirements of our animals on a daily basis. Remember, these, these pastures mainly give us uh, two important nutrients. One is energy, and the other one is proteins. So if we are going to meet the protein and energy requirements of our animals uh, from the pastures, then we need to know or understand the factors that actually affect meeting those nutrients. And uh, to start with, I'll give you, let's look at uh, the factors. Today let's look at the, those different factors that affect the, the, the quality and quantity um, characteristics of our pastures in relation to meeting the nutrient requirements of our animals. And we also look at the different classifications of these pastures and how they actually impact on, on meeting the nutrient requirements of our animals. To start with, there are basically four to five factors that you should always look at as a farm manager or as an entrepreneur or the owner of a farm. Number one is the height of the pastures. Number two is the season, that particular season at which the animals are grazing a particular paddock. Number three is the density. Of, of that particular uh, grazing field. Number four are the predominant species in a, that particular field. And maybe the other uh, item is the maturity stage of the pastures. Those around five factors are very important uh, uh, requirements in meeting the day-to-day -day nutritional requirements of your animals or nutrient requirements of your animals. Now, if we are to discuss the five, let's start with the height. Um, there's, under pasture management, there's something that we refer to as pasture wage. Pasture wage is, is that amount of pasture that the animals are able to graze in a period of a day. The amount of, of grass that is able to be grazed in a period of, of a day by the number of animals that you have. It's very important uh, that when you introduce your animals into a particular paddock, the pasture wage or that amount of pasture that should be grazed by your animals should, uh, the, the pastures that you're introducing your animals to should be at least around 20 centimeters high. Actually 20 to 30 centimeters high. But when you look at this particular area, there's, all, there's almost around five centimeters to the ground. So, if you introduce animals in this kind of area, then obviously you will not expect your animals to meet their nutrient requirements uh, for the day in terms of meeting the protein and energy requirements of your animals because there's almost nothing to graze on. So what is the advice we give? The advice I, 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 I give you in this case is actually to close off this paddock 
close off the paddock such that you introduce your animals in uh, a, a paddock that actually has enough to graze on. Then the second point that we, we, we've just talked about is the density, pasture density. When you look at this area, we have at least a certain height that we were earlier discussing, that at least there is something that the animals can graze on in this particular area. But at the same time, the density is high when you compare to the other side. So in this case, animals will be able to graze and pick enough in a particular area that they are grazing on. So in this kind of, of density, you will at least be able to meet the energy and protein requirements of animals in relatively a smaller area. But when you look at the other area that we looked at earlier, that area will need the animals actually to move uh, longer distances for them to meet their nutrient requirements in terms of the energy and protein needs. Then the third point that we need to look at is the season. The season under which you're introducing the animals in a particular paddock. If it's during the rainy season, definitely there you expect enough pastures for the animals to graze on. But uh, if you introduce your animals in a dry season, then uh, the energy and protein requirements uh, will be low. And in that way, there will be need for supplementation. Because for you to be cost effective and to benefit or to earn uh, significantly out of your dairy enterprise, you should always look at at least uh, meeting 80% of your uh, protein and energy needs of your animals through grazing. So, uh, short levels of pastures mean uh, actually animals requiring larger spaces for them to meet their, their needs. At the same time, you have to do a lot of supplementation. Then we also talked about uh, the predominant species. If uh, your, your pastures are predominantly composed of grasses, then there your animals will, will be meeting more of their energy needs. If your, your pastures are predominantly composed of, of uh, legumes, then you have more uh, protein needs made compared to uh, the energy needs. But it is very important that you always balance the energy and protein um, composition of your pastures. In Uganda, uh, the main or the, the most preferred type of, of pastures for grazing or species of uh, pastures for grazing are Bracheria. Bracheria is the mainly recommended because it is uh, resistant to trampling and uh, the density like we are discussing is re relatively high. Then um, when we look at uh, which, which legumes to incorporate into your, your grazing fields, I would recommend uh, legumes like, for example, Desmodium. I've seen uh, a few plants of Desmodium here. So you, you incorporate a protein uh, species and one of the, the most common ones is Desmodium. Desmodium could be silver, uh, silver leaf desmodium or green leaf desmodium. We are also talking about uh, the, the most uh, resistant or the, the, the species that is resistant to trampling. Uh, this is, it's called Bracheria and Bracheria also has a relatively high density. So the, the, the animals are able to meet their energy requirements in a relatively smaller area because of your paddocks are being composed of uh, 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 bracheria or a chifuta, chifuta as the predominant pasture species. And uh, when, you, when you have a mix of desmodium and chifuta, then you are at least uh, guaranteed of meeting the protein and energy requirements of your animals on a daily basis. Uh, because of those factors that we've talked about, uh, those factors, any changes, for example, when there's a reduction in the height of, of, of the pastures, or when the density is relatively low, or when uh, the, the predominance of the species is inclined on a particular side, or when the season is either dry or wet, 
all those different factors uh, affect the quality uh, and the quantity of your, of your pastures in different ways in terms of uh, the protein and energy requirements of your animals. And because of that, we categorize pastures in three different classes. Uh, the first class is what we call the, the high quality, relatively high quality uh, pastures. And then we have uh, medium quality pastures and then the low quality pastures. And the classification is based on uh, the percentage of protein that is in these pastures and also the amount of metabolizable energy that is available in these pastures. So, when we go back to the classification, high quality pastures means that they are the metabolizable energy, all the energy that is available for, for conversion or for synthesis of medic uh, is, is, is what we refer to as metabolizable energy. Quite high quality pastures have over uh, 11 megajoules, 11 megajoules of metabol metabolizable energy per kilogram of dry matter. And at the same time, high quality pastures have over 20% uh, crude protein in, that part, in, the, in the same area. Then we also, then we go back to the uh, uh, medium quality pastures. These pastures will have between 9 to 11 megajoules of metabolizable energy per kilogram of dry matter and between 14 to 20 percent uh, crude protein. Then the low quality pastures will have uh, below 9 megajoules of metabolizable energy per kilogram of dry matter and um, below 14 percent uh, crude protein. What does this mean? This means that if you are a farmer that wants to maximize uh, profitability of your dairy enterprise, you should always look out to the types of pastures that you're giving to your animals. Ensure that always, as a rule of thumb, always the pastures should not go below the mid, uh, medium quality classification. Because when you go below the medium quality classification, that means they are also increasing on the need to supplement uh, your animals. Supplementation is always very expensive and it always cuts down on, on your profits at the end of the day.